Hey TypeScript fans, today I will show you something that I wish I would have known before, which is automatically fixing all of your TypeScript errors. Yes, you hear right, we can automatically fix many, many, many TypeScript errors at once. So let's have a look at this code here. In this code, I generated some TypeScript interfaces and uh, I used an open API generator to do that for me. And this generator then also created some mistakes. Yeah, and we can see these mistakes here. For example, there is a value that is not being used. Yeah, there's an import statement and it imports map values, but map values is not used throughout the code. So we see here TypeScript error TS6133. Yeah, this is uh, the diagnostic code. And we also see that in the other files, so for example, in the text TS file, same error, time event, same error. And I could go now and fix this all by myself, yeah, by either removing that or by applying a code fix. This is what we can see here. Yeah, we see the quick fix button in the Visual Studio Code. And if we click it, then we can say, okay, remove import from runtime JS. So if we click that, yeah, then this import is gone. We can also do that in the other files. So if we go to text.ts, we see that there is the same error. We can again click uh, quick fix. We can also say delete all unused imports if we have many um, of these kind. But um, yeah, it's a lot of manual work yeah, doing this for all of the files. And now we see even a second diagnostic error, which is 2307. Yeah, so we have to deal with all of this usually by hand. And I will now show you a tool that is very much underrated <laughs> because it can do that automatically. The wonderful tool has the name TSFIX. It's actually built by Microsoft and it's a CLI for applying TypeScript code fixes. So all the quick fixes that we have clicked in the Visual Studio code um, UI, um, these things are now packaged in a CLI that we can execute then from our terminal. And to install these um, code fixes, we just have to clone the repository of TSFIX. Then we have to build the project and link it because we don't install TSFIX from the NPM repository. And because we don't install it, we install it from our locally cloned code. And this is actually what is done by NPM link. With NPM link, we can just say, okay, what we have here on our disk, please make it available here on our machine. I will show you how to do that now. All right, here I am in my terminal now. By the way, if you want to know how to run Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution on Windows, then I have a beautiful video for you that shows how to do that. Um, I will just link it here in the description. And now let's install TSFIX. At first we have to clone TSFIX from GitHub. And then once it's uh, on our disk, we need to install its dependencies. So let's jump into the folder of TSFIX. From here we can run npm install. And then after everything is installed, for example, the TypeScript compiler will be installed to build the project, we can then actually build the project by running npm and then the build script, so npm run build. And once the build script is ready, we can link the project. So that means we will make it uh, executable here on our system. So I will run npm link. That uh, registers now TSFIX here. So I see that uh, one package has been added here to my local npm registry. And this gives me the ability now to run TSFIX. And I can run it with the help option to see what it can offer. So it has uh, many features. Yeah, it can uh, inspect the code. We can also set it to some uh, tsconfig files so that it uh, ingests the config first and then based on how you configured your TypeScript project, applies code fixes or not. We have an interactive mode and so on and so forth. I will tell you about these uh, in detail later. Let's now first check um, the immediate example of how to apply TSFIX on an existing code base. Back to our code. 
We still have here issues with TypeScript Diagnostic Error 6133. And now we want to fix it automatically using TSFix. So let's open the terminal. And in here we can now run TSFix because we linked it. And then we'll see that uh, six code fixes can be applied. And we want to do that. <laughs> So let's use something very, very cool, which is called the interactive mode. We can pass the option interactive mode. And by doing so, we will get to see what TSFix wants to fix. Yeah, it tells us that it uh, found the issue. Yeah, the, the same one that we uh, saw here by hovering over line 15. And um, now we could uh, click the quick fix button, but we can also do it here from the terminal. We can say, okay, we want to accept a code fix for it. We can also say that all errors of type 6133, this one, yeah, of this diagnostic uh, code should be applied right, and should be automatically fixed. Or we can say that uh, whenever we see this kind of error, we don't want to fix it. This uh, involves still some manual work because we need to now make the selections. But on the other side, it uh, asks us before running automatic code fixes. You can decide if you want to use the interactive mode or you just use the right option because with the right option, it will just do it. Now if I select this, then it will apply all the code fixes. Yeah, we see that the import statement here got removed. And we will also see that it updated like three files at once. And uh, we have now like applied all the fixes that could be done automatically. Another great safeguard of TSFix is that it uh, just doesn't like overwrite your code with automatic fixes when you have manual changes. So for example, let me bring back this um, line of code here and let me just uh, add some other things. Yeah maybe a comment. So I did some modifications and I have uh, Git here as um, a version management system. And now a code fix could, for example, like impact this file that I manually edited and maybe also like overwrite then some changes that I made. And to prevent that, there is a safeguard mechanism. So if I now run TSFix with the write option, then I will get to see an error because it recognized that uh, I have changes in Git and it asks me if I'm sure that I want to overwrite existing changes. Uh, so if I want to do that, then I have to pass another flag here, this ignore git status flag. So I can then use the write option with the ignore git status option, which will then just simply run it. So in this case, it preserved my comment because it just modified the line underneath, but uh, there might be other cases. So that's why they implemented this very useful safeguard. If for some reason you want to uninstall TSFix, you can unlink it. So I will use the npm command because it's uh, my package manager of choice. And I will say npm unlink, and then I want to unlink it globally, like on my whole system. So minus G, and then I put the name of TSFix. So that will make it unavailable. Yeah, I removed it now from my system, which means I cannot run TSFix any longer. Now that we've seen what TSFix can do for us, we can dive a little deeper into how it actually works and uh, into what we've done in the beginning. Because in the beginning we built the project, yeah, so let us uh, look at the package JSON file to understand it. So there is this TSFix um, package, right? And we installed its dependencies and then we ran npm run build. So we ran this script here which then um, yeah, compiles the project. So let me just do it again. If I run that script here, we will get a dist uh, folder. It just popped up here. So it compiled the project and then we'll find some JavaScript files in here. And this is important because there is here a bin definition. So there is a binary that can be found in dist clijs. And that's actually what is being used and executed when we link the project and we execute it. Yeah, so when uh, we run npm link, then um, that name will be bound to this package here 
and then Node.js will know that when there is a bin definition, it has to execute this CLI here, this JavaScript code. And the JavaScript originally comes from the CLI TS file, which has this uh, shebang here, which means that um, it will be executed in a terminal using Node. And this is how we can actually register the CLI of TSFix, what we did in the beginning. And the CLI then runs a code fix project. Yeah, so the main business logic here of TSFix is uh, inside that index.ts file. It's uh, quite long. And in here we have, for example, a function that is called get diagnostics, this one here. And uh, it gets the project, which is your TypeScript project. Yeah, and from the project, it gets the compiler options, which means that the compiler options are very important to TSFix. And I will show you some cases, uh, how it comes into play, and also how TSFix um, makes use of your TypeScript version that you have within your own applications and packages. All right, let's revisit our initial project, because in here we had the problem that the import statement was declared but never used. Yeah, we had here map values, but we didn't use it. And we got to fix it by just executing tsfix dash dash write. This then evaluated our TypeScript compiler config. It saw, hey, it's uh, an error that I have a code fix for, and then it fixed it. That was pretty cool. Let me just um, revert the changes by using git reset. And now let's see what happens if our TypeScript config is less strict. So in here, I will just deactivate the check for unused locals. So I will say no unused locals, and this check will be deactivated now by setting it to false. So we have a less strict compiler config, and tsfix will um, check our TypeScript compiler config and then act based on it. So here, this is an error. Yeah, and uh, now let's see what happens if we run tsfix again. First of all, we need to also provide the git ignore status flag because I made changes to the code base that I haven't committed. So this should then run it properly. And as we see, it went through the, through the files. Yeah, it found some diagnostics here, but uh, it didn't found any code fixes that could be applied because now this is not um, a problem anymore as we made our TypeScript compiler config less strict. And uh, this means the import statement stays now. So always make sure like when something happens that um, you didn't expect to happen that uh, your TypeScript config is properly set up and that also the TypeScript version that your IDE uses matches the one that um, your project uses. Yeah? Because your project uses the one that you can um, find out by using npx. Yeah? You can say npx tsc dash dash version and then you will see what um, your project uses. In my case here 553. That's also the version that tsfix will use. Yeah, let me just run tsfix again. Because here you will also see that it will use your local version, this 553. Yeah, it comes here from the node modules and then bin and then there is here somewhere TSC. That's the one that it uses. And your IDE uses the one that is defined down here. So here you can select the version for VS Code and for your UI. And you can say either using VS Code's internal version or using the workspace version here that is uh, installed in the project. There are also cases in which code fixes can become a little dangerous. For example, in this case here with error 2588, I have a problem because Benny here is a string literal and it's a constant, so I cannot reassign it. And I want to reassign it here to 1337. So um, a possible solution would be changing that const into a let keyword, so I have a variable. And if I do that, then I have two more options. I can either allow Benny to be the string literal Benny or the number 1337. Yeah, I can type it this way and then it would be okay. 
Another way would be I will just um, turn the 1337 also into a string. Yeah, so there are many cases possible. And of course, TSFix cannot know our business context and wouldn't know like what would be the best and ideal situation. So let me show you what it does in this case here. In this case, when we run it, and then we'll run it uh, with the git uh, status ignore because uh, yeah, this is a new file here, which I haven't committed yet. So I need to have this ignore git status flag. And um, it will then here just kill the whole code for us. Yeah, and that can be a bit dangerous because now we lost our information. Yeah, we lost our uh, Benny constant and we lost the 1337. So we lost some application logic that might be uh, very important to us. Yeah, that is also why we have to be careful with that. So I want to show you what you can then still do in order to fix it. Because there is a very nice plugin. Um, let me tell you what it is. Um, just by searching for pretty, you will find pretty TypeScript errors. And that's a plugin that I highly recommend. Yeah, you can see five stars, 700k downloads, more than 700k. And this extension actually renders this pretty nice box for us. And in here, you can get a detailed explanation how to fix uh, these kind of errors. And if you click it, it will bring you to TypeScript TV and then it will scroll down to the specific error that you are facing. It will give you a similar error. Yeah, here it's uh, the name of Sophia. So it's the same error case, but um, it will also then have for you like an explanation why and how to fix it.